Uh, good afternoon and a warm, warm welcome to all of you. The topic of today's webinar is Mobile Payments Innovations, Emerging Trends and Future. Mobile payments and fintech uh, world has caught the attention of all the government, regulators, the consumers, and the traditional service providers. Most of these changes have been disruptive, led by technology as well as adoption by the consumers. And hence, the ecosystem players are at the same time excited as well as they are nervous at the pace at which the changes are taking place. In this webinar, I'll be sharing a few perspectives on digital and mobile payments, and I'm indeed happy to share my views and thoughts on the emerging trends and the future outlook. I will share some of these uh, perspectives from a traditional telco service provider's uh, view, and uh, hence uh, some of the thoughts and ideas could be different than what uh, many of you would have seen or heard earlier. In the last few years, we have seen telecom communication companies deep, uh, deep diving into payment services. The objective has been to do more, often more services to existing customers and thereby increasing the life cycle of customers for all services. The wraparound of these services is expected to go deeper in building the relationship with existing telco operator customers. While we also believe that some of these services could help the telcos increase in their falling art. Let me begin this webinar with a loosener. These depictions are definitely on the funny side, but as a customer of a bank, many of us relate well to these underlying emotions from our experience. While banks have been clearly the place to go to keep your money for, of course, more than one reason, banks offer security, they offer acceptable returns and products which are complete in some senses. While this is the state. The transformational innovation is something which was missing hitherto in our traditional banking and payments services. In many areas in India, customer service is still just a lip service for an average customer, especially these in rural India. Customer experience many times is not even in the radar of the top KPIs of uh, uh, key bankers in their day-to-day -day operations. Of course, there are exceptions, and these depictions may be a bit harsh, but I'm sure all of us are getting the drift. But what happened in the last few years? There were three areas where things changed rapidly, in fact, very rapidly. The first area was the regulatory, and we have seen the regulatory really taking advanced uh, and very modern steps to ensure that the financial services space remains relevant and uh, up to date the technology we have seen how technology has disrupted various industries and we can see now technology really are hitting hard on the traditional ways we of the banking and financial world and of course is the consumer who has been very uh, adaptive to the technology and has been adopting these changes while these three areas deeply impacted the traditional pillars of banking effects of which we are still witnessing the traditional model of dispensing financial services and across the world has been challenged. Service providers in the system such as banks are now on the back foot. And these challenges have emanated primarily because of the deregulation, which is allowing new category of players to come and participate in the financial services space. There's been rise of uh, what we call as fintech companies where technology is very well merged with the financial services and a host of new products and the way these products are serviced has uh, risen. And to some extent, the failure of the current uh, banking and financial institutions to innovate and change at the same space where they were expected to lead the changes they seem to be at the moment followers. However, we had to begin at a higher uh, level and look at the four macro trends which form general theme of evolution and they also influence life and technology and they're also influencing to a great extent the world of uh, mobile payments. These uh, four trends as I depict here are the globalization, the urbanization, the consumerization and the digitalization. Globalization here would include all the processes by which Businesses and organizations develop international influence. They start operating at an international scale in a more closely connected world. 
to a large degree the internet technology advances have accelerated our markets and our lives are being internationally bound we are more interconnected than ever more networked for better or for worse urbanization is a process of gradual increase in the proportion of number of people who are living in urban areas and this is in a way throwing up new challenges and new opportunities for both the technology and financial services companies consumerization can be defined as the process where the focus shifts away from an organization to the consumer and hence the traditional ways of doing business undergo change and gets challenged so given all these areas the globalization and digitalization had greater impact on the changes in the mobile payments ecosystem we see today uh, and why we keep the above in perspective at all times when we look at the traditional forms of banking and financial services we will spend more little more time on globalization and digitalization globalization is a dynamic and a complex process and mostly non reversible phenomena that's an important one that some of these can cannot be changed it involves integration of markets it include it, it in, uh, involves integration of uh, you know technologies and of nation states in a way that has been enabling individuals corporations nation states to reach around the world faster cheaper deeper and in more uh, effective manner than ever before globalization is caused by many factors as we all know technological innovations in communication and data processing has been a key enabler spread of rationalism as a dominant knowledge framework developments in capitalist development and obviously the deregulation which has been happening has been helping this process financial and payments globalization is the backbone of the global economy and it is the most dynamic part of economic uh, globalization and we will see more and more of this happening wherein the national boundaries will collapse and we will see that uh, this has a far bigger impact on mobile payments than uh, what we have seen till now this will be well supported by financial reengineering and of course uh, when supported by deregulation it will also bring in a host of innovation in products which we have not witnessed here with the second theme which i said we will focus little more in detail was the digitalization which is again impacting the the world of uh, mobile payments in a major way Uh, as we all know it is the process of converting information into the digital computer readable format it leads to crucial data processing storage and transmission and hence has a very interesting way it can impact customer experience it can help in reducing cost for the banks and customers and uh, the service providers like uh, the, the payment service providers or telcos can use a digital data which is more readily available in a manner to be more effective and be more relevant for customers technology is non discriminatory and hence will treat the same way everyone number of customers will be increased for banks because the increased convenience of banking it will reduce the human error and productivity will see enhancement as we go more and more into digitalization Uh, obviously the next phase of digitalization we will see when we will find systems and things getting interconnected what we call as the interconnected world so in summary i think the combined effects of globalization urbanization consumerization and dig digitalization will be seen in many facets of mobile banking and financial services as well as in the mobile payment space it gives a host of opportunities for telcos to play a major role in payment network and payment services and in my subsequent slides we will dwell on some of the paradigms which we are facing at this moment but before we go there let us look at what is happening on the on the, on a worldwide level we are adding a huge amount of people who are becoming a middle class consumer you know uh, class and it is believed that 2 billion people will be added to the consuming class by 2025 and these consumers will drive banking and commerce this mass consumerization and its growth is disrupting the traditional payments and financial services business it is believed that with growth what we have witnessed in the last 3 4 years in the mobile uh, digital payment space that within the next 7 to 8 years by 2025 more 
payments will be processed by non-traditional payment service players then the traditional uh, banks and financial companies so this would be an interesting opportunity and important uh, trend to watch out for whoever is participating in this business this has led to growth of new age and newer class of service providers who are excited by this opportunity of financial payments there are technology companies also called as fintech companies who have jumped into this bandwagon who are innovating the traditional products in a, or in, in a way to meet the needs of this growing consumer cl uh, class and also to make our products and services more convenient. From the telcos perspective, uh, the companies are collaborating with these technology platform service providers in a manner that they are able to challenge the existing banks and financial services. One of the primary areas and of, of focus and also of opportunity for telcos would be to make the entire supply chain more efficient. And hence we are seeing mobile and digital payments witnessing significant changes. Commerce enablers are focused on making the entire supply chain more efficient. While banking is one, the telcos are not behind. It is not only money changing hands time and again, it is also tracking the money trail and ensuring traceability, which is helping the regulators. Cashless payments, distributed ledgers are outcome of this zest. And we would see more and more innovations as we move forward. Another case in indicator to be is to look at the various innovations which we keep hearing about the Bitcoin development and the way the distributed ledgers are permeating other uh, you know other parts of our life the amazon th the, the rise in the amazon third party resellers the cyber security market the us mobile payments we have seen witnessing a huge amount of growth the p2p lending in china and the mobile uh, wallet semi closed wallet services in india are really the indicators to show that the future of mobile payments is really growing and it's there when we look at the current operating model for various financial services, they are either undergoing some disruptions or are in the process of it. We will look at some of them to understand the type and scale of these potential disruptors in little more details. But before that, I thought I could share with you how the future of the financial services impact get impacted. So in this uh, presentation in this uh, part of my presentation the slide which has been well encapsulated by the subject matter experts from the world economic forum had divided the role of banks and financial services into six different functions these are the six different areas in which the bfsi service providers i offers their services and they are relevant the first one is of course the payments and the others being market provisioning, investment management, insurance, deposits and lending, and capital raising. And within each of these, there have been uh, there have been different areas in which innovations and disruptions are taking place as we move forward. If we give you an example, in the market provisioning part of uh, the financial services we are it is expected that new marketing platform and smarter and faster machines will impact the market provisioning uh, part of the financial uh, of the financial services in the deposits and lending alternate lending is suddenly uh, likely to disrupt uh, the current uh, traditional way business is done and of course the shifting of customer preferences and the rise of virtual technologies in the same way, in capital raising, we have seen crowdfunding. Uh, uh, we have seen the initial uh, initial stages of crowdfunding, and as we grow forward, it is expected to become more and more relevant. In the same manner, there are two broad areas in which digital payments are getting impacted. The first one is the emerging payment rails, and the second is cashless world. We will discuss both these payment rails a little more in detail. Obviously, when we look at these in details, we have to keep it in mind some of the key questions which remain. Which are these emerging innovations which will have more impact and will be more relevant than others to the digital services? How will these 
innovations impact the ways in which financial services get structured, provisioned, and consumed in the future? What will be specifically the role of payments, FedTech disruptions in payments, role of various players, including telcos, technology companies, and then mobile uh, payments? So let us discuss the payment score of the financial world a little more in detail. Innovation in the financial services deliberate and predictable. Incumbent players are likely to be attacked where greatest sources of customer friction need the largest profit pools. So this is, will be an interesting area. And this is as relevant for payment services as it is for other areas. Innovations are having greatest impact where they employ business models that are platform based, which require a huge amount of data. They are capital live. And hence we have, we have seen telcos playing a playing a prominent role. The most imminent impacts, effects of disruption will be felt in the banking sector. However, the greatest impact of disruption is likely to be in payments in the sector. Collaboration between regulators, incumbents, and new entrants will be required to understand how innovations can really alter the profile of this industry. Telcos in India have collaborated very well with the technology innovators and platform developers. These companies have worked very closely with the regulators to look at the emerging opportunity in digital payment space and hence uh, offer services which make more meaningful uh, relationship with their existing customers. In tomorrow's world, when the 5G gets introduced in the country and the speed of the networks go to the next level, we would see payments becoming the next game changer telcos. What are the emerging themes? I think the emerging platform and decentralized technologies provide new ways to aggregate and analyze information. Many emerging innovations leverage advanced algorithms and computing power to automate activities that are being done currently manually. So the need for telcos to collaborate with technology companies becomes more and more relevant. New entrants with deep specialization are creating highly targeted products and services. So we will see an involvement of current products, the way they are designed and the way they are serviced and the way their services are delivered would also undergo change as we have witnessed in the last two years. So let's look at the payments a little more in detail. Disruptions led by telcos and fintech, uh, you know, world is interesting, uh, you know, uh, space to space to watch for us. As I mentioned earlier, there were two distinct disruptive trends which we had seen in uh, uh, in the mobile and digital payment side. One is the cashless world, where there are four key disruptive trends: the mobile payments, streamlined payments, integrated bills, and the next generation liquidity. And the second uh, part of the cluster or the cluster where the innovation is happening is the emerging payment trails where money transfers, mobile money, and cryptographic protocols are disrupting the current uh, payment uh, process. Within the cashless world, we are seeing new consumer functionalities are being built on the existing payment systems, which will result in meaningful changes in the customer behavior. Financial institutions will lose control over their customer transaction experience as payments become more integrated. With reduced visibility becoming default payment vehicle or the card, among the specific customer segments will become more important. The winning issuers will be those who gain visibility into more customer spending patterns rather than the brand and the logo. On the emerging payment rails, which is the second cluster where the disruptions and innovation is happening, uh, there is a great potential for cryptocurrencies and blockchains to radically streamline the transfer of value. So today's payment rail has more emphasis on storage of value. Tomorrow's payment rails would more streamline the transfer of value. As more efficient rails are adopted, the role of traditional intermediaries such as banks and payment gateways as trusted party will reduce. There would be of course new risks, risks of reputation of security and regulatory, which are the areas of focus at the moment. 
from both the telco side and from the technology and also as well as the regulator. And application of these emerging payment trails can go beyond uh, money transfer and uh, transfers which we have seen. They can go forward and modernize financial infrastructure as, as it exists. Let us look at the journey so far. Payment industry has continuously evolved over time, but there are still some challenges to make the world cashless. We have seen in the last uh, so many years, credit cards in the 1950s, debit cards in the 1980s, the rise of e-commerce, electronic payments have grown in popularity. They have displayed cash and they have displayed tax. Number of innovations have emerged in the past five years, leveraging mobile devices connectivity to make the payments simpler and more valuable. From digital wallets to automatic teller machines, technology is merging very closely with the uh, connectivity to offer seamless uh, services. All these innovations work on one objective to use the less of cash and make payments less visible to the payers. While they're also enabling financial institutions and merchants to use data-driven customer aggregation engagement platforms. As more payment solutions allow customers to link their bank accounts for direct payments and seamless point of sale vendor financing, the use of credit cards would get displaced by these platforms. As customers would lose visibility into their payment choices, increasing the default payment method and reducing the importance of the traditional differentiators like brand and design can become very important. There would be an elimination of a need to carry your credit cards and uh, emergence of payment decision support systems could support the proliferation of each mobile payment. So success of any such innovative uh, payment solution will require strong customer rationale and reason to switch as most customers do not consider the existing payment regime to be broken. That's a big challenge. The system works, it may and can work more efficiently. In an increasingly cashless future, payment providers who can embrace emerging payment innovations to offer differentiated value-added digital experience will be able to deepen their relationship with customers and this forms an important opportunity for the telcos. Telcos have captive customers and they could as well play this game more effectively than current players. There are a host of uh, benefits which uh, such services bring both to the telcos and also to customers. We all know about the convenience, efficiency, the traceability and the protection. However, there are challenges which we have seen, uh, we have witnessed over the last few years, especially in the last uh, 24 months. First has been the merchant adoption. Electronic payments are still to be accepted by all the merchants across all the geographies and across all kind of transactions. Despite the drive of the recent, recent drive of the government on demonetization and the ongoing pursuit to promote cashless payments, the merchant adoption has remained the biggest and the trickiest part to be resolved. And this becomes more challenging when the transactions are that of small denominators. And hence, Making small payments uh, uh, and making anonymous payments as simple and as fast will become an important uh, criteria of how this uh, proliferates further. Well, despite all the security, and uh, we shall discuss that more in detail, and the safety measures which uh, mobile payment systems take, we have seen frauds and we, we have seen uh, also increase in the fraudulent transactions, which have given rise to a certain amount of insecurity. Uh, amongst the customers. So uh, in the payments innovation, leveraging mobile and connectivity space, we are seeing that innovations are taking place primarily in the four buckets of mobile payments. Integrated billing, streamlined payments, and next-gen security. The mobile phone where convergence of connectivity and instruments of payment has taken place. We have all seen ecosystem players attempting to lead the way. And there are telcos who are working very closely with the merchant aggregators and with platform service providers to be at the forefront of uh, providing these services to their customers. The payment stacks are being built by also handset manufacturers such as Samsung and Apple. 
in which complete mobile and merchant solution is developed and they compete with telco service providers as well uh, to go after this business. However, the integration with the billers and the integration with the payment recipients becomes the most important opportunity and most important area for uh, telcos to focus on. In the same way, innovations in integrated billing is bringing the mobile shop shopping apps almost as a as a norm. But seeing to machine payments is catching fast, and that will be an, another interesting area to watch out for. We have seen already smart metering enter into the into the realms. But in future, smart metering could result in uh, you know automatic payments. It could result in reorder levels. It could send send a sequence of messages which could trigger actions from the banks to the utilities, and sometimes without an explicit go ahead from your end, the transaction. Telcos need mobile payments could as well uh, uh, play, play a prominent role in future. The mass proliferation of internet. Enabled by the next gen uh, technology such as 5G could be a game changer for telcos. Telcos as well could be the player leading collaborators with the fintech and other players when such the next level of uh, revolution will happen. Telcos own the customer relationships and are best for a place to offer this service. Then there are issues triggering uh, around security, which is an important uh, you know area of innovation for cashless world. The end perimeter security will enable smooth POC checkouts in the future, will have more profound impact on uh, touchless transactions. And that's the to be one area for uh, to happen. In the innovation uh, space, let's look at the customer experience. What mobile payments innovations have done till now has not so much touched existing payment processes as much as modifying the front-end processes to improve experience. Most of the current payment, uh, I think, innovations are more focused on the front-end process and how easy they are to be used. This seems to be the largest area of impact for, for the uh, platform and technology companies, and that's why these are seen more, uh, you know, focused. Till now, we have seen fewer, you know, innovations touching the systems of records and references. But as time goes by, and with the advent of blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency, you would see the distributor ledgers and some other underlying technologies would also impact other areas of financial services. However, streamlining the payment solutions rather than fundamentally changing how a transaction is treated is where all attention is. Let's look at uh, the, as a theme for telcos and mobile payments, the following fintech uh, you know, uh, trends would be interesting to watch out for. Uh, while uh, we have listed some of them, but the interesting uh, would of course be the technology becoming the enabling smooth, uh, enabling smoother customer experience. To give you an example, potential customers to register via their app first in little as little as 60 seconds would become very important. The telcos in the future would have mobile payments on the putting a spotlight on the onboarding process, making this uh, almost frictionless as disruptive, uh, you know, innovations help the telcos to bring in frictionless uh, services with biometric layers, digitalize the KYC and AML checks. We will see use of technology to sell insurance. And I'll give you an example. Uh, in Sweden, uh, we have seen collaboration between banks and telcos, which is lead push notifications offering travel insurance. Whereas this such financial services are not sold by the, by the, uh, by the banks or financial services at the forefront. It is a telco which has been at the forefront to offer these services. Throughout the last two years, we have seen new insurance technology companies rise from the ranks, and the traditional insurance companies are already uh, facing uh, heat. Once the friction gets removed from the customer uh, journey, the second commonly cited thing to watch would be the chatbots in payments, powered increasingly by intelligent systems based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. This can make real difference 
basic uh, everyday customer service interactions and FAQs can be easily handled by AI and chatbots. Cost of such technology is uh, including the advanced computing is plummeting at a very fast pace. Digital payments will uh, move further away from traditional banks of today as payment options start getting embedded into chats. While telcos are trying to get firmer grip on payments, newer players such as WhatsApp and Google have entered payments business. They say this is going to be a big revolution. We have seen the rise of mobile payments and social platforms, uh, and we would continue to see them playing a bigger role. The market domination has allowed them a lot of these companies to branch into e-commerce and subsequently into fintech. The Internet of Things, wearables, the smart uh, home and connected car, uh, all which we are talking about concepts coming out of mass IoT. We will see once the 5G gets more, uh, you know, gets introduced, will offer more and interesting opportunities for telco to play this role. All these services would require payment as an enabler and payment as an important part of completing their process. And hence, a telco who existing has an existing large base of customers would be best suited to offer these services. So 2017 uh, has been a great year of pilot for uh, blockchain in financial services. We have moved from the proof of concept into production. We have seen blockchain technology being now implemented by by various uh, you know functions we've also seen some bit of it being also recognized by various uh, regulators and banks and financial services companies around the world in the western world we have seen telcos uh, looking at uh, blockchain as a technology for providing some of the services uh, in a more efficient manner that's one one more area for us to uh, watch Another area which is uh, going to impact uh, the digital payment space would be the e-commerce and mobile commerce. And uh, it's very important for us to have a look at it, what's been happening in that space. When we look at the uh, e-commerce on, and the, on the, the, the impact of e-commerce on the digital payment space, we see that uh, there has been a big rise there. While there have been challenges, which also we will discuss. Uh, to give you an overview, the online sector in India is expected to be a $1 trillion market by 2020. We have seen companies like Amazon and others really invest in this market. Till 2016, during the five years, as per Nielsen, consumers in India have been preferring cash on delivery as a mode of payment. There is still some bit of a hesitance to use mobile or digital payments due to online fraud risks. And it's important to see why what factors have contributed to cash on delivery. Obviously, what we know is convenience and familiarity with cash payments. Uh, there has been also less challenge of availability of uh, you know credit card and debit card users in the country, which is fast changing. Proliferation of the mobile wallets and ease of using it, and consumers' lack of trust on the online payments. This has not uh, really helped that also rise in uh, online scams and all other kind of security that we you know making out of this. However. What we also see in 2017 is slowly and progressively increasing popularity of mobile wallets, especially after the demonetization. This could very well lead to an alternative possibility of conversion cash onto on delivery of online payments. Backed by so where is the cash, where is the payments has not happened at the time of you place an order on the e-commerce portal, but there are technologies available for you to make a payment which is digital at the time of delivery. Of. Also backed by cashbacks, discounts and deals which have been promoted by the e-commerce uh, companies, we are seeing digital and mobile payments really getting more and more popular. We have seen numerous ways in which, uh, you know, the cash on delivery is uh, uh, discouraged and some of the steps which we have seen would include allowing payments to happen through card upon delivery rather than cash. Improvement of the payment gateways and expanding options. The instant refund mechanism uh, works more well with the with the wallet if it is tied up with uh, e-commerce companies are tying up with banks for extra and special cashbacks and discounts. While we have also seen some of the uh, operators also, you know, discouraging cash on delivery by charging extra. 
And then there is always uh, putting an acceptable cap on the COD order value, which is all helping to promote digital and uh, mobile payments. New age of buying and selling of goods and services is hence rapidly changing. And this rapid change going up newer opportunities for mobile payments. And existing service providers such as telecos are need to look at it as a newer uh, opportunity for providing services to customers. The mobile payment system ecosystem is and the app is also extending influence uh, over buying behaviors. This is impacting how the buyers are influencing to buy something. The sourcing of the particular merchandise to actual improvement in convenience in purchasing and payments. Uh, and this is increasing the actual number of transactions and hence the emphasis on making the entire process from buyer preference product development, sourcing, purchasing, and execution as seamless and as efficient and as uh, cost effective as possible. The usual uh, the usual tra uh, trails will remain as cashless payments, pre-authorized payments, and mobile payments, which is where the biggest friction could lie. Telco wallets. While a telco has uh, uh, have replaced uh, paper coupons and other dozens of the current wallet, the first round of disruption in payments in India happened with mobile adoption of prepaid wallets. We have seen uh, the rest uh, has, as history and we have seen mobile wallet companies attract millions of dollars uh, on investments over the last few years. While the telco wallets wrapped around their customers even more tightly, we believe this is not certainly the end of the road when it comes to innovations. Integration of uh, wallets with other payment trails such as the UPI, which I'll discuss a little more in detail in this my subsequent slides, um, um, uh, will bring in more convenience. It could further alter our payment, uh, you know, behaviors. So we will see telco wallets also undergoing significant changes during this journey. The technology players and regulators are moving uh, in tandem to make it more robust, to make it more secure, to make it more safe, and uh, uh, as errorless as possible. Let's look at some of the numbers. We have seen huge growth happening, uh, but needless to say, it is expected to grow at a much faster rate than what we have seen. Uh, it is believed uh, the, the compounded annual growth could be as much as 132% over the next five years. It could reach uh, 460 billion by end of 2022, which is a huge opportunity for uh, companies. With more than 1 billion uh, mobile subscribers, uh, India has a promising potential. And hence, uh, the digital and mobile payments uh, transactions are expected to further increase. In the year in, uh, 2016, India made uh, mobile payments worth 8.2 trillion uh, uh, of transaction value. And it is expected to grow at 150% for the next four or five years, as I mentioned. Uh, let's uh, continue to look at the market. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, there's been a huge growth in the in the wallet transaction over the last three years. It's gone. It has reached USD 500 million uh, uh, and has exceeded 2.6 billion last year. Nearly 95 percent of all transactions are cash based, which is signaling still an opportunity. So there is a huge amount of opportunity available uh, for the financial uh, mobile payments to grow. The challenge has been fickle loyalty. So with the advent of proliferation of so many wallets, uh, holding on to a customer has been the biggest challenge for wallet service providers. To do that, then we have seen huge amount of deals, discounts, and cash back, which is really uh, not adding uh, so much value to the service providers in the long run. Uh, however, migrants are being targeted for remittance. I think uh, there are different various uh, models and verticals in which we have seen these cases evolve and develop in the mobile payment space. We have seen uh, file growth and boom in mobile commerce. We have seen education as a vertical and government as a vertical where a lot of growth in mobile payments is being witnessed. And the underlying uh, uh, proposition remains the value, the distribution and partnerships uh, and tie-ups for providing uh, such a service. And telcos are working very closely to ensure the drivers and the, uh, and the enablers are in place. When we look at the competition, yeah, it's a hyper competitive market. Uh, Fintech, uh, you know, companies 
while they rule the world in terms of uh, while they rule the market in terms of centrality and distinctiveness they are still a big challenge the focus for telcos has been more on the remittance and money transfer uh, on the side as uh, you have a large amount of captive audience and there is a need for such services however uh, the move and the, uh, uh, and the way the, the telcos are evolving is to more go more and more into the e-commerce and mobile commerce based payments so mobile payments is following the uh, the mobile commerce growth curve however ROIs and valuations are still under stress the big challenge remains uh, for both telcos and non telco payment operators how do we make money am i uh, this slide, I'm just showing you a snapshot of the current state of, uh, you know, mobile payments industry in general. Uh, you would see various quadrants there where we are looking at opportunities we, uh, for the vendors. We are looking at how new entrants can, uh, you know, alter this entire situation, and how they are impacting the competition. And, uh, of course, the threat of substitute uh, where cash and parallel economy remains strong. While well, businesses are still not generating their profits for service providers, uh, we believe the narratives for the future is very compelling. All of this ensures that payment uh, players with deep pockets are going to stay in the game and will continue to invest in this business in trying to serve this particular market in ever innovative way as possible. The fight for customer acquisition has now shifted to the fight for acquisition of transactions while the recipe for loyalty is still not built. So we still see a lot of transaction acquisition uh, being motivated by cashbacks and deals. And sooner or later, we will see this taking out to make this entire ecosystem more uh, profitable. Let us look at the Indian telecom landscape. And this is very important to keep in mind when we look at new services emerge, such as like uh, mobile payments. And we see there, hence, a Huge amount of uh, uh, a kind of uh, average with uh, mobile payments. There are two roles. One is that of an enabler of provider uh, of the infrastructure, which I see as the first role uh, of the Indian telecom sector, and second as a service provider in the digital payment space. Well, uh, some of these numbers we are aware of, and I don't want to get into details of it, but it is needless to say. Uh, and, and we all know that there is a huge opportunity with India being one of the largest telecom markets with over 1 billion uh, mobile phone users uh, we might have the second largest broadband users in the next couple of years the whole industry is uh, in terms of economic value has been uh, over 300 billion dollars uh, expected by 2020 and with, with so much of growth and potential expected in the future uh, the mobile payments offers uh, a great opportunity for telcos, right? I mean, we, there are there are a lot of other narratives. I mean, the smartphones shipments uh, which we have seen has increased fourfold, and uh, and and more interesting. I mean, for the the next uh, uh, narrative would be that the government has already now started looking at auctioning five G spectrum, and uh, we believe that by two thousand twenty we will have five G. Uh, getting implemented in the country, which will promote the next level of innovation. Uh, necessary things like the Internet of Things, machine to machine communication will also offer and propel the digital payment uh, with new innovations coming in. You know, case. In this slide, we see uh, the case for uh, Telcos. When we look at the key success factors of mobile banking, we see story emerge, uh, which makes a case for people like us continue and be around in the world of payment services. The traditional bank with the existing uh, you know, features as well can get used by a telco bank account powered by a traditional bank uh, at the back. Enabled by technology, underlying support, and hence telecom sees a huge uh, prominent role for themselves. And, uh, uh, and, and, and hence uh, there is this strong case. So, with this, uh, you know, background, uh, what we believe we have seen in the digital payment space has been the first wave, and uh, as we move to the next uh, level, we would see uh, 
all the emphasis on the mobile phone and service providers uh, refocusing on uh, the digital payment based on the leverage of their strength and power of this pivot. So as it looks like we are not yet done, things are just warming up. For the telecom service providers, opportunity exists to script another success story. Similar to what we did in the basic telephony to everyone, enabling financial services and payments using their mobile phones uh, with reliability, reliable connectivity will not just increase the loyalty of customers, but could also address uh, the crucial challenge of customer churn. But that can be a very important uh, uh, in area where telcos could use uh, mobile payments and financial services to further increase the relationship with the customer. It's a known fact that a banking customer stays with banks for more than uh, and, and longer time than a telecom subscriber does with the telecom services. So combining the two is, can be a big thing for telcos. Uh, there are three innovations uh, which I would like to briefly uh, talk about. Uh, this is the and these are these innovations that are very noteworthy. The unified payments interface. The government sponsored D and the Bharat Bill payments. Telcos uh, are integrating very closely with the UPI functionality to make the traditional wallets to make more transactions without the need for prepayment. And hence, you will see UPI getting into uh, helping us. Uh, so in all, to conclude my uh, presentation, uh, I would say living in mobile age, age payments is the area wherein telcos see themselves leveraging their existing relationship to build deeper and even more impactful synergy with the customers. Telcos need not spend money in customer acquisition. The compelling argument is that of dovetailing payment services wrapped around in a manner this relationship becomes more meaningful for customers and hence help us increase the customer life cycle. This may as well be the next game changer for telcos. Thank you very much. I would now like to turn it to the moderator to take this session forward. Moving on with the questions. The first question is, what percentage of market can Google's test can <coughs> capture by 2018 end? If I understand it right, uh, the question was related to Google's uh, age. Well, it's very difficult to see at this moment because uh, it is just uh, being launched. As on yesterday, uh, the, the number of people who downloaded the app has been only 3,000. And if you look at some of the comments, uh, the app has to still evolve uh, next level. But still, we have not seen any great innovations uh, in that space as compared to the UPI, which is as versatile as it can be. So I would say it is little too early to comment on that. Next question. What is the current percentage of revenue telcos are making out of payments for e-wallet services and what percentage of revenue can telcos make from digital payments in 2020? So currently the revenue model, so revenue is the the, the amount of uh, money to charge customer for digital payments uh, in your books is the revenue for the customers. Currently the revenue has been negligible for the simple reason that the digital payments have been, uh, you know, have been free at least for the last one year by the government. If you look at whether various services such as money transfer or uh, bill payments, at this moment more and more uh, investment is happening in both acquisition of customers and acquisition of transactions. So the revenue which we uh, which we uh, you know see uh, in telcos has been very less. However, the case in point is not so much about revenue but it's more the ability for telcos to uh, you know, provide more and more services to their existing customers and hence help them to stay with them for all services. So I believe that more and more proliferation of payment services would help uh, uh, telcos to retain their existing customers and to a great extent also, uh, you know, curtail falling out to other customers. So, uh, I see that as a more important uh, motivation for telcos to be in this business. Next question. How can telecom players open a sizable stream of revenue from cashless payments? Will we see a series of partnerships with e-commerce giants? Yeah, I think we have seen that already happening. Uh, revenue will open up for telcos once they are well integrated with the 
various e-commerce and uh, uh, you know portals and working with those ecosystem players. Uh, we have seen these wallet companies becoming mobile commerce companies, becoming e-commerce companies, and there you know, lie the revenues. So yeah, I see that as a big opportunity and place for and goes to go forward. Next question: Why cost of a transaction to consumer in case of paper currency is practically zero? It is much higher amount in case of mobile wallets and other payments modes. This is the biggest different for mass adoption. How do you think this can be addressed? While we believe that direct currently costs of dealing with cash is lower than uh, making digital payments, the indirect costs are higher. Plus, there is always the cost of convenience. Um, as we move forward, we will see these uh, costs coming down. Uh, we've already seen a drastic reduction in the you know, payment gateway costs over the last uh, two years. I recollect it used to be as high as 2%. It has now come down to less than half a percent. So you can see that uh, with all kinds of uh, promotions happening and uh, with all kinds of deals that are in the marketplace, this will get promoted. As an end consumer, I will. Uh, there will not be a case where I end up making more, pay, uh, you know, paying more than using uh, digital uh, form than using cash. We have already seen that happening. If you go onto any uh, e-commerce or mobile commerce site, you would get additional cashbacks and incentives if you are using a digital form of payment, including mobile payments. So, as a consumer, it is no longer a no longer a hindrance. Next question, what kind of network transformation is observed in telco network to participate in payment world? I think the most enabling uh, requirement is the connectivity and we have seen connectivity really improve uh, uh, and, and uh, hence uh, there are two enabling factors as far as the technology infrastructure goes. One is the availability of smartphones. We have seen a lot of smartphone proliferation in the cities and uh, we believe that there would be over 600 million smartphone users by next year. The second is, of course, the connectivity. And uh, uh, with the advent of 4G, the connectivity is available. So it's been uh, uh, as ubiquitous as possible for, uh, you know, for uh, uh, payments to take place. And there are billions of transactions happening every day on uh, digital payment side. So technology has no longer been any uh, an issue at the moment. Due to time constraint, uh, we would take our last question. The question is, we have not seen much of a growth in digital payment wallet to for GSM related transactions. Any reason for it? Well, uh, if I understand the question as that use of wallets for, uh, for making airtime or telco payments, uh, if that is a question, I would say that uh, uh, if you look at the, the digital payment side, um, we have seen this more an urban phenomena that payment wallets uh, are being used for making payments for airtime recharges. Um, I believe there is an opportunity for improvement and we would see more and more payments happening uh, using the digital forms, uh, which includes mobile wallet. Uh, already, I think there are more number of now uh, uh, digital tools being such as credit cards and others uh, on payment methods. So we will see this also in, uh, increase, but uh, the challenge has been to promote it and um, uh, telcos uh, need to really look at it in a different manner uh, within each organization to promote uh, both the digital payments and the mobile uh, wallet payments. I would like to thank Mr. L.V. Sastri and thank you everyone for attending to this webinar on telco mobile wallets, emerging trends and future. It was an engaging and insightful talk and we hope all the participants have enjoyed the session.